What's up everyone? So I took a break from doing the wiring on the car today so that I could finish the front suspension, put those lower ball joints in, put it on the ground and check the clearances because I know we checked the clearances in the last video, but when you actually load the suspension, that changes everything. Um, so I really wanted to do that today just to make sure that I didn't have to order any parts, which come to find out, I do. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's pretty wiggly. I bet you can see this though. Um, that's not good. This was a side that I hit Travis with, so I, you know, I kind of suspected that I would have damage there, and that's pretty much what I found. The inner tie rod looks fine. This one is junk and just a paperweight now. Uh, I did manage to find a factory one, so I could at least put it on the ground and you know check the fitment of the wheels to the fenders. That I wasn't as worried about clearance full from lock to lock. So it looks like I'm not going to be able to do that today. I'll put, probably put it all back together just so I can put it on the ground and check the fenders eventually. Because uh, I don't know how long or if they even have the uh, outer tie rods in at Monster Tricks. I'll have to obviously check on that. And I might end up running just the <coughs> uh, two factory outer tie rod ins because honestly... The Monster Trick ones are really nice because they can adjust the uh, bump steer, but I don't really have a bump steer problem because the car rides like almost at factory height. Uh, it's probably really only like one inch lower. It's just like the body kit and the wheels take up the gap, body kit takes up the gap to the ground, so it looks a little bit better. But I actually run my car pretty high because the rumble strips out at park will just destroy uh, front bumpers and if you're really low, your oil pan. And I don't need to run into any of that problems because that stops me from drifting. And I would rather raise it just a little bit and keep drifting all day rather than look cool and have to stop every, you know, five, six laps or stop everybody else because I get stuck or I destroy my oil pan or I blow up a body kit and somebody has to go out there and clean it up. So, yeah, I run relatively uh, stock height and it would be kind of nice to have the outer tie rod ends because then if I do this again Easily replaceable. So anyways, I'm just gonna get to putting the rest of the front end together and see where that leads me and uh, Yeah, like I said probably just check the clearance on the fenders to the wheels <laughs> So after getting everything all bolted up, I noticed and remembered that I steer a little bit more to one side than the other. So I started looking around and um, I figured out what I screwed up. So when you put the Mazda Trix steering rack spacers on, you're supposed to... <clears throat> this is your new stop right there that goes against the rack. Well, that is not completely true. Uh, actually, it stops on the rack teeth itself. So all my measurements were based off of that bump stop, which is, or, well, based off of the bump stop hitting the rack, which is not how it works. So finally, <coughs> I took everything apart to measure it, and I actually found that the left front outer tie rod was also halfway out. So another thing I had to fix, um, which started to explain a lot of things, because I had some funky steering issues every now and then. And I know I said this in a previous video that I just kind of, I never stop to fix something. I just kind of drive around however the car is feeling that day. This is one reason why that's a really bad idea. Because had I not caught that, that could have fallen out. And then that side is just completely gone and can't steer anymore. And with those ridiculously sticky tires, it's going to go wherever that tire points. So super happy about that. Um, I did put the factory tie rod in on this side and looked up the prices on everything and it looks like I'm gonna actually run factory style uh, outer tie rods they're a little bit too long is the problem that I have so I'm gonna cut them down and um, use them because they're like $12 or $13 or something like that from AutoZone 
that's amazing. Plus, I have another RX-7 that you guys saw me pick up that has a good set on it. So, even more money to save. Uh, that being said, though, also, I started to look at the steering wheel and found that this bushing had come out. And that's why I had so much up and down play, which I don't have anymore. And uh, kind of cool, like, I have this as well, this slop that's always been there. Have not been able to figure out what it was. And then come to find out, now that I don't have a windshield in and I can grab the steering wheel and turn it by myself. I don't know if you can see that, but... Focus. The upper shaft is moving and the bottom shaft is not. That's because the bolt's loose. So, again, the importance of doing a nut and bolt check on a race car, pretty freaking important. And uh, I'm going to start doing that right now find the socket for that and get it all nice and tightened up. Probably need this one because it is kind of a tight space there. Yeah, that's it. Now to find my ratchet. In typical me fashion, my garage is too dirty to actually find my ratchet. So I got my 12 mil wrench and turn the steering wheel just a little bit. Let's see how much this thing actually tightens up. Oh, hey, you know what? It's a 13. Of course it's a 13. Why would it be a standard metric? Well, standard metric. A normal metric size for an import, right? Uh, yeah, that would just be silly. So, grab a 13. It's probably because it's an aftermarket replacement universal joint. Would be my guess. Uh, Anyway, yeah, that's pretty loose. Wow. And you know how long it's been since I put this rack in there? Long stinking time. So, that's awesome. We'll see how it looks now. Oh my god, that's way better. I can actually feel the rack turning when I do that, so I will take it. That's awesome. That's been a problem for a while. Okay, on to putting the rest of it together. Alright, so I spent some time trying to put the front end back together just to find out that I'm not going to. See that there? That nice little bend. That's not supposed to be here. It's supposed to be flat. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly when I did that, but obviously I bent it pretty good. I mean, it's still usable, but it's not usable. I mean, come on. Uh, it's also pretty worn out, which I already knew, but I didn't know it was that bad. So this thing is pretty much junk now, and I needed two outer RX-7, the factory-style RX-7 tie rod ends. So I made a post on Facebook asking if anybody had some because... Uh, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, and Connects were all out of them. It was going to be like two or three days. And then, for whatever reason, each of them only had one of the like kind of cheaper $15 ones. So I made a post on Facebook and I said, Hey, you know, does anybody have one in the Salem area? I can come pick up. I'll buy it off of you. I don't care. I just need one. My uh, friend, of, well, a friend of mine, uh, Zach Abercrombie actually got back to me and said that the S13 outer and the RX-7 FC outer are the same thing. So, here is one RX-7 inner, one S13 outer, and it works. Uh, these actually, I have two almost brand new. These probably are only like six months old. Um, because I put them on my wife's S13 and then when she bent a tie rod I upgraded her her inner tie rod uh, I upgraded her inner tie rod to S14 stuff and kept these in the S13 tie rod just in case she ever bent another one then at least we could like hodgepodge it back together so that we wouldn't like ruin a weekend or anything so I'm really glad I did because I'll end up taking them back now and um, yeah they're brand new they're like in perfect condition so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up the tie rods and 
Also the rack spacers. S13 guys will probably recognize these because they run them too. I think Z Z33 guys also. Um, but yeah, they, the thread looks a little messed up. I don't know if you can see it, but I'll try to clean it up a little bit, clean them off and find some like red thread locker or something and really lock these in because this one came loose on me and I would really like to fix that this time around so that it doesn't happen again. So yeah, I'm going to clean it up, get these tie rods in and then just kind of do an eyeball alignment and hopefully be able to put the car on the ground tonight because as you can see, I'm losing daylight quickly and uh, it's going to get cold as soon as the sun really goes down. So, I cleaned up everything, I loctited it, and I started looking at the threads. These threads suck. Uh, this is actually not the worst one. This one right here is the worst one by far. Uh, it is almost flat, so I need to go get a tap and dike set. Um, I'm probably going to head over to Level Ride to do that. So, I'm not going to film anymore tonight. I think I'm pretty much done. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that really sucks because I wanted to get them in tonight, but I'm not going to be able to. So in the little fast forward thing, you saw me marking on these. Uh, basically what I did is I measured from the inner tie rod, the outside edge of it, all the way in four inches. And then that's going to be my reference mark for when I go to do an alignment. Um, I just like to make sure that there's like plenty of thread in the outer tie rod and when you're looking at it, it always seems like there's less than there really is. So I know that four inches from here is where the end of the tie rod in is inside of this, which is just kind of more of a comforting thought than any performance gain of any sort. But yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, I am going to go to park this weekend. Uh, I might be driving the 240. I might just do media. I haven't decided yet. Actually, my bank account hasn't decided yet, let's be honest. So, uh, if you see a crappy looking flat black 240 with a red hood, that's me. Come say hi. Uh, if you see a guy walking around with a cell phone taking video like he's an actual photographer, uh, that's also me. Come say hi. So, yeah. Anyways, I think I'm, like I said, I'm going to call it a night. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. It is getting closer to being done, I swear. It seems like it's taking forever. If it seems like it's taking forever for you, imagine how it feels for me. Because I drove this car, and I know what it can do, and I ripped it all apart, and now it's just sitting here, which really freaking sucks. But, you know, I am making progress. It is moving forward, so that's kind of cool. Um, it's just little things like this where I don't have a, a tap set kind of just blows. So... Like I said, I'm going to grab one or two, head over to Level Ride, see what they have. I also have to find a castle nut, because for whatever reason, only one of the outer tie rods had a castle nut. But that's not a big deal. So, anyways, yeah, I am going to go do all that, and I'm not going to bother to film it. So, I will see you guys later.